so I understand that. With some uh, with a line pond, with the line pond as opposed to uh, a fail safe. Absolutely. But how about the fail safe? Can you expand your retention ponds? Are you able to do that now? Well, we have additional property on campus, on site there, that if this doesn't meet the requirement, then yes, we can. We have additional storage. We have additional property on site that we could build additional storage. Why not? Why not? Why not do it? Is it that expensive? Well, we're building 10 million gallons now. We think that's going to okay. be sufficient. And we're also going to be able to divert some of that to an additional treatment facility. So we're thinking that uh, that, that will handle any additional flows that we get. So if you have a December event, Okay, which was a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. I absolutely get that. Uh, will you handle it with these improvements? I believe we will. Okay. During flood, is that some of your retention ponds also fill the water from the flood? The retention ponds downstream? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was, so, I, I was on I was on campus one because the line, there's a line, the line there's no additional flow. Digging one, and when you dig one, the groundwater comes up. It's already full before you have the overflow. We don't have as much of an issue with that in Georgia as you do in Florida because of the, the soil conditions. You know, we don't have a lot of pressure coming up. You know, but uh, I know in Florida, you know, you dig a hole and fill the water before you get done. You know, my experience with the co-op on the one time, we had a well and we filled the water. data we've gotten by open records request from the city of Valdosta is on our website walls.net wwals.net look under issues Valdosta wastewater spills you'll see it but you shouldn't have we, none of us should have to go through a public records request to get that information I agree with you we're dealing with people's health that's ridiculous and I think Valdosta should put that on their website the test results Spills along with the test results. Well, you know that's that's uh, you know that's a message from Marcel. 
questions out there, but I don't know of any state agency that publics, publicizes the data on the website. Y'all think it's The director made a comment that was very, that was very sound. He said that they tested the water and found that it was not human feces or contaminants that was causing the problem in the river. I would just ask that the state of Florida validate that. Okay, I mean, that's, that's a strong comment. Okay, what he's saying is that we have a ton of cattle in Hamilton County and Madison County and all the way up. I get that. And I know that it produces a whole lot. I get that. But it doesn't destroy membranes in a water system. Okay, so the question I'd have is, I would ask at least if, if our health department would do a DNA sample after a spill and let's send it to the same lab where our lab is equivalent and let's find out what is in that water coming down the river after a spill. And probably Get a baseline. Yeah. And I, I'll say one thing. We live on the river. I mean, we, we can walk down the back of that little property, and there's the river right there. Yeah. And, and we see that river turning chocolate brown, y'all. I mean, you know, that's a black river. The water's black because of the, the tanning in it. But we've seen it just turn chocolate brown and stink like the dickens. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, we, it's not wastewater. It's not storm runoff. It's sewage. Period. Thank you. 